this evening. This is one of the best shows on board. I absolutely love this show. But before we get on to talking about Ruby, I've got to tell you about Nan and Granddad. Yeah, absolutely. So Nan and Granddad actually come for a cruise with me. It's lovely. They come on board. They were doing their thing. They were having a great time. And uh, they went up to their stateroom. And well, my Nan done the cardinal sin. She really did. She sat on the toilet and she flushed while she was sitting on the toilet. And she got sucked right in there. Well, Granddad calls me in a panic. He says, Mike, you need to get up in now. We've got a trouble with your Nan. So I went running up there. And I said, oh my God, what's, what's going on? And I saw Nan sitting in the toilet and Granddad had given her a baseball cap to cover her modesty, right? So I went out and we called the plumber straight away. The plumber come running up. He said, okay, he took one look. He said, I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. I said, give me the good news. He said, we can get your Nan out. I said, what's the bad news? He said, the bloke in the hat doesn't stand a chance. <laughs> Folks, if you're ready for a great show tonight, give me a yeah! You are in for a treat as we go all the way to Hollywood's Golden Hour. So 
more like it. Well, hello, I myself am very, very excited. I love when I get to do something a little bit extra and I get to put on a dress that makes me feel like a sparkly sausage. So this is a great day for me. <laughs> um, I'm gonna introduce myself really quickly. My name is Ruby Shadley and I am from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Do we have Oklahomans? No, okay, well, I just like your, your, your um, enthusiasm. Thank you so much. I love your enthusiasm for Oklahoma. I like it too. <laughs> but yes, I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and the third and most important thing is that I like to sing, so I'm gonna do that for a little bit. But, but, um, uh, let's just move on to introducing the show then, because you're gonna learn a lot more about me than you ever needed to know in the first place by the time this is done. So the show is Hollywood's Golden Hour. This is all about celebrating storytelling through song and paying tribute to the incredible artists that brought them to us. And with James Bond alone, we've heard from Paul McCartney, Adele, we've heard from Gladys Knight, and the original Bond girl herself, Shirley Bassey. <laughs> and I would love to pay tribute to so many more, but I'm pretty sure the horn section may actually kill me if I did that. So, <laughs> I mean, how are we doing? You doing okay over there? You, yeah, I mean, you look great. And that's the thing. You can't play James Bond and not look cool. And that's what I think is so awesome about it. But there's something to that, and I think I picked the wrong career, because if you're a super spy, you automatically get the coolest gadgets, you get the coolest theme song. Think about it, we have James Bond already. And then we have Sherlock Holmes. We have uh, you know, the, the Mission Impossible fellas. You've got uh, Columbo, a Scooby-Doo of equal stature. <laughs> Thank, yeah, let's hear it for Scooby-Doo. And their mystery machine? Oh, that's the coolest car I've ever seen in my life. It has flowers on it. Oh, I absolutely love it. But whether you have a martini, shaken, not stirred, or whether you have a Scooby snack, the most important thing in any detective's toolbox is drama. Lights!
Oh my gosh. And they are all under the direction, of course, of your music director, Rafa. Who is in turn under the direction of me. Uh, and not because I'm a singer and I have a microphone, no, no, no. But because I'm his wife. Ha ha! But I'm gonna die. Yeah, say it louder. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Well, I'm very lucky too. <laughs> um, but I would actually like to talk about him for a second, not as Rafa the husband, but as Rafa the person, as his own person. Um, because, <laughs> because he is absolutely incredible. Um, we can make some qualitative assessments about him. One, he is holding a trombone, and he plays it very well. Two, he conducts, sometimes with the trombone, and he does that very well. But one thing that we cannot see is all the hours he spent arranging all of the music that you are hearing tonight. <laughs> it's incredible. And what that means as an arranger is that the client, or me, <laughs> the client, um, get, shows all the music that, you know, I want to do it. Like, I want to do this song, this song, this song, this song. And he is able to translate from ear to paper so that everyone knows exactly what they're going to play with, you know, a little bit of embell embellishment or flair. But he is so incredible at what he does. And also, if you've been keeping a look, uh, looking at the screens up there, he also did this, the screens that he's very, very proud of. <laughs> so he arranged all the music. And he did all the screens, and he's, he's just incredible. So because of him, I get to run around up here and make noise, which is all I really want to do. So thank you for being the most supportive husband in the world. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, when we were putting this show together, we spent a lot of time thinking about what we could do, what we you know maybe shouldn't do, what we absolutely must not do, like a full tap number in a full evening gown two songs in. Um, <laughs> but this was one of the things that we must do, and that was the song that you just heard. I think Somewhere is not only one of the greatest songs ever written, but it's one of the most important. And to explain that, I want to talk about its history a little bit. Um, Stephen Sondheim, the lyricist, came into the project West Side Story later in production. And what that meant was some of the lyrics were already written. And they were beautiful, they were elegant, they were powerful, and they were completely wrong. Because unless you were born in a Shakespeare play, they weren't appropriate for two teenagers falling in love for the first time and all the social dynamics orbiting around it. So Stephen Sondheim took those lyrics, threw them in the trash, and replaced them with lyrics that were simple, but they were truthful and they were impactful. And I think he proved that you don't need the biggest, fanciest words in the world, but just the right ones. And in hopefully the right order. And I think in a world that can be you know, so scary and violent and uncertain sometimes, lyrics like, there's a place for us, are so necessary. And that's what makes a song like Somewhere so timeless. Um, <laughs> but speaking of timelessness, and magic, I want to pay tribute to the best in the business. These guys have been creating stories that have followed us generation after generation, aging with us through every stage of life. In fact, they celebrated their 100th anniversary last year. And I'm certain that, I'm certain, <laughs> I'm certain that their lyrics and their music will stay with us for the next 100 years.
characters that I just sang from, water or mic stand? Water. That was a tough one. Okay, um, each of those characters that I just sang from were all striving for freedom, whether it was from internal circumstance, external circumstance, or whether it was from a person or a thing they thought was holding them back when really they had the power all along. Now the repeated line in English in this next song is, I dream of souls who are free. And I hope we all find that freedom. Whether it's freedom to be joyful, the freedom to be loving, or the freedom to hold your head up high. From the 1986 film, The Mission, this is Nella Fantasia. about my husband. <laughs> All right, so we, <laughs> we did meet on a ship, actually. And in fact, we 
met on this very ship. Yes. <laughs> so it was very exciting when we found out that we were contracted to come back here because last time I was here, I had an embarrassing and painful crush on the music director. And this time, I come back as Mrs. Rafael Jesus Hernandez Comari. So as far as I'm concerned, this is my victory lap. Thank you. <laughs> now we got married in Gibraltar and it was a lovely, lovely, lovely time. And I actually, you know, I have a picture of that day when I married the love of my life. There we are. It's me and Rafa. <laughs> Rafa, where's your suit? <clears throat> ah, okay, it might be. It may be a monkey, but they have the same amount of hair. It's fine. Um, <laughs> so, and uh, yeah, but it was Gibraltar, so there were monkeys absolutely everywhere, and we live in Spain together now, so it's just a two-hour drive from where we were. Um, my mom kept feeding them french fries, so they weren't going anywhere, which I think is fantastic advice. That's my dad. If someone's feeding you french fries, don't move. That's why we're all up in Ocean View. Thank you for being here. That's a big sacrifice. Um, <laughs> but it was, it was a wonderful time. Um, we took our, the MVPs of our lives and we asked them to come with us to Gibraltar and we actually rode the cable car up to the top of the rock of Gibraltar, which didn't scare me at all. And um, yeah, we had a lovely time. It was very simple. Um, the wedding package we bought was a room for the hour to get married in and 12 chairs, 12 glasses of Prosecco, and we had a little lunch after. So it was a really easy day, except for the one really stressful thing, especially as musicians, was deciding what in the world I was going to walk the aisle, to walk down the aisle to. And um, we ended up walking down to uh, uh, Bridge Over Troubled Water, the Elvis Presley version, which was beautiful, and I think it was a great choice. But in the middle of our post-ceremony lunch, we were flash mobbed by a couple of Rafa's family members, namely his mother and his sister, both named Esperanza. And um, I realized in that moment that that song that they were singing was our true wedding song. And I did some research and it was actually written for a film. Now bear with me, it was written for the Twilight Saga, but it has outgrown the skinny jeans in the vampiric drama and become one of the biggest songs in the wedding industry. And so with that, this is a Thousand Years by Christina Perry. <laughs>
the symbol Corona. And the symbol
here. I'm so grateful to him. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to Joe on lights. Thank you to Juliana, stage and production manager. Thank you to my boss, Mike, who is, I think he's, he's run off now, but he let me run around the stage and have a microphone, which was irresponsible, but I'm grateful. And, um, and of course, thank you to everyone backstage. Thank you to this incredible celebrity silhouette orchestra. We got Fran on the piano. We got Carlos on the bass. We got Thomas on the drums. We got Oscar on the guitar. We have Javi on the sax. We got Ben's on the trumpet. We have Rafa doing everything, apparently. <laughs> and of course, thank you to every one of you for being here. I've got one more for you. And uh, yeah, have a great rest of your evening. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Oh, thank you to my pastor right here in supporting me. I really appreciate it. Go Reds! I call you when I need you. My heart's on fire. You come to me, come to me wild and wide. Oh, you come to me. Give me everything I need. Give me a lifetime of promises and a world of dreams. Like you know what it means And it can't be wrong Take my heart and make it strong You're simply the best Better than all the rest Better than anyone Anyone I've ever met And I'll step on your heart I hang on every word you say
I'm not gonna lie, a rapper is a bit like a phantom. He gives me nightmares every day. But he's a fabulous, fabulous young man. Ladies and gentlemen, that's just a little snippet of some of the talent we've got on this ship. Isn't it quite phenomenal? And we're gonna bring you even more tomorrow as we bring you Broadway and then Leslie McDonald will in the ground for you tomorrow. But for now, I want you to get up, get up, continue to enjoy the night. Couple of days left. Let's do this. Have a great night. Bye bye. Thank you. That was, no, I just hope I wasn't listening. No. That was a tough one. Huh? That was a hard show. Was this very one? difficult, yeah. Yeah, yeah, very, yeah. Very, very but it was amazing. Thank you. The Celebrity Theatre will now be closing. Please exit using the four doors at the rear of the theatre. Thank you.